Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I'm Topher, and for those of you who don't know and just randomly decided to click on my video, welcome to the channel. I'm Topher. Thank you for stopping by. So we're here to do a reaction, and we're diving back into, I was about to say My School President. No, our dining room table. We're diving into episode four. I don't know where My School President was coming from. Lord, I wasn't even thinking about that show. Um, but yes, we're diving into episode four. I just finished reacting to episode three and episode two, and like I keep saying, it is the most precious thing in the world, and I'm just excited to see what precious adorable things they are going to show me this episode so we're just gonna dive on in and find out <sighs> okay so <sighs> there's we're starting to explore a little bit more of yutaka's I don't know that I want to say trauma right now, but because I don't know what actually happened. But some of the family issues he had growing up, because the last couple of episodes, we've only got little flashbacks. We got little flashbacks of him at the dinner table um, and him giving this sort of explanation to Minoru that that, you know, as long as you feel like you can smile and have a good time. It doesn't matter what you eat. You can have the most fancy meals in the world and just not be in company that you want to be in. And it, it, it just doesn't taste good. Um, and then we've seen him getting texts from family members and him just kind of avoiding going home. Like dad's 60th birthday and just kind of avoiding going home for some reason. But we haven't really explored what the reasoning is. So here we got a little bit more flashback. Um, Still not enough for me to fully understand what his reservations were, because all we've seen as far as his family history is, so it seems as though he was adopted, potentially. Um, so he's joining this family, and the existing brother was not very welcoming, not welcoming in the least. It's like... I don't accept this. I, I don't want a little brother. And it's like, I, I don't care what you want. We've, we've adopted this child. But also it's like, that feels like a sort of temper tantrum that a, a very, a very young child would throw like below the age of like seven, eight years old. That seems like the temper tantrum that a little kid is going to throw. Like, I don't want a brother. I, I want to be the only kid and whatever. But older brother there seemed like he was teenager, high school, seemed like he was old enough. So granted, at that age, teenagers are very moody, very what not. But I'm like, I still feel like that's old enough to have some sense of decorum. So, have, so like, even if that is what you're feeling, maybe it's not a conversation to have right when we're welcoming this child into the house. Maybe you have a conversation with mom and dad after when when he's not around or something just to you know i'm not saying you should talk behind people's backs but like maybe the first time that he meets you shouldn't be you saying i don't want you in this house maybe like you're old enough to know better than that um so he was not terribly welcoming and then we've got the other flashback again at dinner just kind of like an extended version of that where he sitting at the dinner table and everybody's eating their fish and he's it just seems like he's in a new environment so he he doesn't like he looked like he didn't know quite how to cut the fish or you know what to do with it and whatnot it's new environment for him and the older brother again just kind of chastising him and it's that sort of emotional scar from a young age that people can carry with them throughout life so as we've seen, we he's had these little flashes of that for quite some time. I don't know if those were the only instances of his brother being unwelcoming. Um, I don't know if the dynamic ever changed. I don't know if that was just his brother being an asshole teenager. And then, you know, once he grew up, maybe graduated high school, went off to university, this, that, the other, if he changed in his outlook on having a brother or changed on how he treated um yutaka i don't know i don't know all we've got are just where he is now avoiding his family and those couple instances of flashback that we're seeing when he first moved in with the family 
Dad seems very welcoming from the little bit we've seen. Mom seems fine too. Um, it just seemed like little brother or big brother was the only one who was being in some way, shape or form unwelcoming. So I've not seen enough to really know if that sort of behavior continued for a long time, if something happened and big brother changed his mind, but you talk has just been holding on to this is for the longest time. Um, the fact that he's been avoiding going home and like just kind of ignore, if avoiding responding to the family in general. Like, I don't know that just having an asshole big brother would be enough to keep me from going and seeing parents if I had a great working relationship with them. So maybe he does not have a good relationship with his parents as well. Um, big brother in the store is like, well, I'll tell everyone you're alive and that you haven't changed at all, which... Again, I don't know if those are words coming from the family or if that's just coming from asshole big brother. Um, but there, there just seems to be more below the surface that we haven't scratched. We're just scratching the surface. And um, I'm interested to see where they take that. And yeah, like I said earlier in the episode when um, Minoru texted him and was like, hey, we have Stu today. You want to come out for lunch? And they had a nice little lunch on the bench and just cuteness, whatnot. I mentioned there that I love how I can still feel this sort of adorably awkward energy between the two of them, where it's like Minoru, I think he's conscious of the fact that he might like Yutaka. And Yutaka, I think, is conscious of the fact that he likes Minoru. Um, but they don't always know exactly what to say or like how to make the conversation continue. It feels very realistic where like they're sitting around and he's like, mm, okay, what do I talk about? What do I talk about? Thank you for making me lunch again, even though I already thanked you 17 times for it. Thank you for making lunch. Um, and you know, just the way to get the conversation going. And all we do is talk about cooking and what we're going to eat next and what you're going to like. But still, it's adorable. It's adorable. It's adorable to see. Um, and then carrying over, following the scene in the grocery store, you could see that Minoru was concerned about Yutaka, but he didn't quite know how to how to check in without crossing a line or crossing a boundary that maybe Yutaka does not want to cross right just yet. Um, so he's like, you know, that brother that we met, he doesn't look a whole lot like you. Does he live anywhere nearby? You know, just trying to test the waters. Like, okay, is it okay to talk about? And Yutaka didn't really seem to want to go any further into the conversation about his brother or his family life. So, Minoru kind of just stepped back, but then he could still see, like, throughout the whole cooking process, Yutaka felt a little withdrawn and a little distracted, um, like he had a lot on his mind. So when he was leaving, he's like, are you okay? And Yutaka's like, what do you mean? And you could just see Minoru just wanting to ask more and wanting to let him know that, hey, I'm here if you want to talk about anything or but not quite knowing how to verbalize that and it just feels very real uh it feels like a very real circumstance where it's like you know sometimes people whether you've just met them or you've been friends for a long time they might have some family history that you're not privy to yet and they may not be ready to talk about certain things certain aspects of their past and it's like I don't want to pry, but I also don't want to see them hurting like this. So I want to do something. I want to try and help in some way, shape or form. I want to let them know that I'm here to talk if they want to, but I don't, I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to butt in. So it's like this very realistic sort of feeling. Um, yeah, it's a, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, I don't want to hypothesize too much. I, I just need to see more of what Yutaka's home life was like growing up or what the dynamic was with him and his family. Because like I said, that first little clip we saw of him coming home for the first time 
only one there that seemed unwelcoming was the brother. The rest of the family seemed nice enough. And now, present day, he's avoiding the entire family. So I feel like there's something else that went down. Something else had to go down for him to have this huge set of reservations about spending time with his family. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I am going to... Tea's been helping. Tea and talking's been helping because like, I, I can feel... I feel like I have more control over my vocal cords a little bit. A little bit. So I think I'm going to refresh my cup of tea. Maybe I'll get myself a new flavor this time. And maybe we'll dive into the next episode. Maybe. You'll just have to stay tuned and find out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications to be notified when all my shenanigans get posted. Anything else you'd like me to react to, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I'll get to it as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, you're more than welcome to join us over on Patreon. You don't have to, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Love ya. Mwah. Now we're together, there's nothing